When I think of myself being a female in the Marines, I don't bat an eye. It doesn't seem different to me, but I guess to other people, it is different. They had thought maybe my brother was gonna go in the military, and I don't think they ever thought their daughter would yeah. go in the military. What is your expectation going into Fleet Week? Predominantly, the military is composed of men. Uh, have a good night. And so there is that perception that they're here to like mingle and potentially, you know, meet somebody. Sex and the City had an episode all about yes. Fleet Week. Yes. Yes. Ladies, semen, 12 o'clock. My husband's a Marine, and I, I fell for that, absolutely. <laughs> I think it's very attractive. But for us, we, we're here with a, a different mission, a different purpose. I think that's the perception that's given out for Fleet Week. But what about the females? Last year, I was invited aboard the USS Arlington for the 30th anniversary of Fleet Week in New York City. Fleet Week is when thousands of active duty sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen descend upon the city to rub elbows with civilians and maybe blow off some steam. I've had a bit of a crazy morning. I was on a helicopter at like 7 a.m. and now I've landed on the USS Arlington because I'm here to hang out with some female service members and get their perspective on Fleet Week. I think when most people think of Fleet Week, the image that comes to mind is the sailor in a white uniform walking down Times Square with women throwing themselves at him. And while that's a totally valid experience, I don't know if that's necessarily the same case if you're a female service member. So I just want to see if that is the case or maybe they're here for something totally different. This is Lieutenant Stephanie Pavo, a 37-year-old logistics officer and one of the female Marines I'm hanging out with today. Wow, this is so beautiful. She is normally stationed in North Carolina, but has spent the last few days living on this massive warship. I've never been to New York before, so as we came up the river and you started to see different places that you've either seen in movies or TV, you know, it becomes real and I teared up a little bit. Really? You know, you kind of start to feel like the sense of pride, like. What I do actually, you know, it's more important and the public recognizes what I do too. It's not just, you know, it's not a job. Yeah. It's, it's a calling. Fleet Week is basically a giant PR mission for the military. They invite civilians onto their ships. You really have to get used to like being in small, tight spaces, <laughs> which I'm not very good at. Show off their toys. This whole thing that we're standing on, like from here to where the fans are, this is the machine. Including a hovercraft. Oh. Hovercraft and host events all over the city. The goal is to bridge the military-civilian divide, which is at an all-time low. And that's bad for recruitment, and perhaps ultimately national security. Most civilians' exposure to the military is through over-the-top Hollywood portrayals of frontline combat and increasing news reports of sexual assault and abuse. So while Fleet Week is meant to be a celebration, these service members are still stepping into the civilian world wearing a uniform with political weight, especially if that service member happens to be a woman. Did you struggle or did you have anyone go, I'm actually really against the military and I'm really against war and I think that you're making a huge mistake? I definitely had some of those moments. You know, I've, I've lost friends over some of my life choices. The media tends, when they tell stories of the female experience in the military, there seems to be a narrative that's uh, sexual assault and abuse. Certainly, there are issues. I personally have not dealt with anything uh, similar to that, so it's not the norm in my world, you know? Um, but I think that we look at the military as being perfect, mm -hmm. and much like any business, there's gonna be, um, there's gonna be things that we need to work on, and, and that's one of those. But I will say, we have equal pay, same opportunities uh, for advancement, promotion. There's no closed doors um, in the Marine Corps anymore, so, We've come a long way, and I think that we're gonna to continue to go a long way. You're just starting Fleet Week, you're in New York, you're gonna have the opportunity to talk to lots of people. Is there a message, is there a goal that you have that you want to accomplish? I would love to remove that image that women in the Marine Corps or in the armed services are only dealing with sexual assault. I would love to put a positive showcase to all of the people here that we love our jobs, we're content, and we are happy to serve our country. 
Women have been a part of the military for the last 100 years. And in 2015, the DOD finally allowed them to serve across all combat roles. Still, women make up less than 15% of the armed forces, and those with the rank of officer are an even smaller fraction of that. Stephanie hopes that more representation and diversity of stories might help change those numbers. And she's not the only one. Her roommate for the week is 23-year-old Tori Carr, a fellow officer who's also experiencing Fleet Week for the first time. Hi. Hello. Can I come in? Absolutely. Come on in. Erica. First Lieutenant Carr. Very nice, nice to, meet to meet you. It's also her first time experiencing how cramped life on a ship is. While we're on the ship, six females fit in here. And right now, uh, me and First Lieutenant Pablo are living here for Fleet Week. This would be expensive in yeah. New York. <laughs> yeah, this is really great real estate. You, can, yeah. you don't even touch the walls. See, this is great. <laughs> so this is the head. Um, or the bathroom, the as we head. call it, in the civilian oh. world. <laughs> I was like, what's a head? You have your toilet and your shower. You have to be careful once the ship's going. You're bouncing back and forth in here. Personal boundaries don't really exist in our world. I mean, you're tight quarters. These are our, our racks, as we call them. Oh, bunk mates. We bunk are bunk mates. Yes. Lucky. Yep, I'm on the top bunk here. Nothing hidden under here. So you can um, store all of your stuff underneath here. Yeah, totally. Uh, but tonight is about getting off the cramped ship and onto the cramped streets of New York City. A chance to let their hair down, kind of. Can you do like fun things with hair and makeup when you're out on liberty? I was told is what free time is, right? Yes. Liberty. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we are required to wear certain hairstyles. Oh, so wow. for the women, we can't get super fancy. You can do some braids. You can kind of dress it up. I like to call it my female rebellions <laughs> because you know in uniform you, we all look a certain way, yeah. but you know you have your subtle female rebellions like the makeup, the nails. We are a marine, mm -hmm. and you you don't think I don't think about gender at work. I don't think that I'm a girl and they're a boy and like whatnot, but now we're going out in the town and I should be able to celebrate and dress up. The guys do tend to get a lot of attention. I mean, literally civilian women, it's like kind of a holiday. I mean, I think Sex and the City made it mm -hmm. popular. From my experience, a lot of people don't even know that women serve in the Marine Corps. Our uniforms look a little different than the, what the males wear. And so there's an ob your eye is drawn to the men wearing it. My husband's a Marine, and I, I fell for that, absolutely. <laughs> so I think it's very attractive. But for us, we, we're here with a, a different mission, a different purpose. Even for some shopping. You know, stereotypical for girls, but like, <laughs> we're, we're our base is stationed, there's not the best shopping. When we go out, you're gonna wear this. Yes, it'll be our dress blue deltas with our, you know, beautiful shiny officer rank and then our wards and ribbons, the blue trouser with the red blood stripe. And then because it does get brisk and kind of cold, we also have uh, the trendy optional tanker jacket. Where do I go online to buy these things? Oh. <laughs> so you can't buy them. <laughs> I really want that jacket. Yeah, I know, right? It is cute. It's it a, a great jacket. jacket. Um, but you can enlist. We're looking for a few good women. Oh, yeah? There's still I'm gonna time. Enlist. Just saying. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Just for the jacket. Just, <laughs> just for the jacket. I'm going to do the bun tonight. Okay. Like with the sack one? Brigadier yeah. General, United States Marine Corps, arriving. I think right. Cami paints easier than makeup. <laughs> The secret is on the creases of your face and the shadows, you do the dark colors, and then you do the lighter colors where your face is, accentuates more. And <laughs> there's, a, there's a method to it. Before military life, what was your like aesthetic? Very different. I actually won prom princess my junior year. Oh, and right. I won prom queen my senior year. Loyalty. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Queen Victoria over here. <laughs> Did you have military in your family at all? Yes. My father's in the, uh, well, was in the military. He's retired from the army. I think they had thought maybe my brother was going to go in the military. Mm. And I, I don't think they ever thought their daughter would yeah. go in the military. And even my father, when I, I called him and to tell him, he wasn't a, about it, I guess. Why do you think that was? Probably because, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, you stumped me on this one. <laughs> if you were to guess. Well, I think he was in the military at a different time, and women definitely were not prominent. And I think the idea of women in the military to him is very different of my idea of women in the military. When I think of myself being a female in the Marines, I don't bat an eye. 
it doesn't seem different to me. But I guess to other people, it is different. Knowing that there are fewer females in it and fewer females that are Marines. That made me want to be a Marine even more. So people have to salute you, right, when they walk down the hallway? Right. Finally, it was time to hit the streets, but they needed to sign out first. So this is the Liberty Lodge, and if you're going to go out on Liberty, you have to sign out with your name and a time and who you're going out with, your battle buddies, we call it. OK, so your battle buddies tonight are? So my bat these are my two battle buddies tonight. Um, and so when we come back on the ship, you have to be present with them. Uh, have a good night. Like the saying goes, leave no man or woman behind. Unless you're a civilian, then your ass is getting left on shore. I think if most people's understanding is like, oh, Fleet Week, these guys, they go out, they hook up, they bring women back to the ship. Like, that's not true. That's not true. Is that true? Not, no. Absolutely not. not oh, I'm so shocked. A Sex in the City lied to me. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'll admit, it was a little surreal walking around the city with a group of people in uniform. Lots of gawking and random shout outs. Great. Have a good afternoon. You too. I also forgot it was these women's first time in New York. So you've never taken the subway before? No, it's like overwhelming. Right oh now. my saying... God. Luckily, I'm a very good leader. Oh, this way. Visuals? Do we have visuals in everyone? How do you know, like, which train does what? Oh, I'm like, just making it up. I have no idea. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, well. After a somewhat successful mission of navigating Midtown, the women were able to do what they've wanted to do this whole time, talk to the public. Well, once the public finished taking photos with the dudes in uniform, of course. Hi, Great. sir. Seven five. Five. Rock. Rock. Hey, you guys are you lieutenants? We are lieutenants, yes, sir. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Oh, well, thank you. Did you serve, sir? Yeah, I did. Oh, once a Marine, always a Marine, right? In a way, <laughs> my this is my yeah. mother. Because we come from all over. Yeah. So, um, like, I'm from Michigan. You've got, um, yes, like, back to me. Right here. We're not. We're going to bring oh, up the, the map. Everywhere. So I saw that you were talking to Stephanie a little yeah. bit. What what was your takeaway? She was awesome. <laughs> like, and honestly, I found a lot in common with her. Like, really? she's, she's from Michigan, and my dad has family in Michigan. You kind of are doing a really good job just rolling with the punches of like slightly strange things being thrown out at you. Yeah. Hi. I feel like you have to. Hey, how you doing? Hi. See, that guy's used to being gawked at. <laughs> I don't really care about this magic show anymore. You know what we should do? We should get in a cab and we should go to the fucking bar. Yeah. I talked to people for a living and could only handle Times Square for 20 minutes. But these women were loving it. One, two, three. And the public was receptive. Perhaps slightly drunk, but receptive. Let's get a picture. Get a picture. I want a picture with you. Can you take a picture of us? I know. Ask them. Yeah. I think there's a resilience in a woman who can take on this position and be at this caliber as a man's level, but it goes beyond that. And I don't even see you as a man or woman in that element. I see you as a fucking fighter and a freak. And that's, and that's, that means so much. No, that's integrity. That's integrity. To Fleet Week! To Fleet Week. Tori, are you just drinking water? I am, yes. What? I really thought Fleet Week was supposed to be like, it's totally chill to rage and be crazy a little bit, but that's just not the nature of it. Well, and I think, you know, we volunteered for this, right? Like, we signed up, we wanted to lead Marines. A piece of that is acting a certain way, and it, it's like any job. We're out, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, like someone back on the ship, like, what kind of message is that sending? You're not seeing us engaged in conflict, you forget that we're still training and we're always at the ready. So it's an important piece for us to go out and remind the public that we're the elite fighting force in the reserves, ready to go at a moment's notice. It's a little past 1 AM, and the Marines are still partying inside. And I'm quickly fading. But yeah, this is Fleet Week. 
It might not be as sexy, I guess, as like what some people might think Fleet Week is all about, but at least the women that I was hanging out with, it's very genuine to who they are. They love this country, are incredibly proud about being a Marine, and all they want to do is share that with the public. If you put the politics of war and military aside, I think as women, let alone officers and the Marines, they're ultimately held to a higher standard until it becomes the norm. Fleet Week! So when that day comes, maybe then I can buy them a drink. Maybe.